I love Christmas. It's my favourite time of year, probably because in my house when I was growing up with crazy parents, the only time that they were actually happy was Christmas time. And somehow that, you know, that catches you as a child and it's something that you carry forward. You know, we all have memories of Christmases, good or bad, that we take with us. And so it's always been important to me to recreate my own Christmas. So that was something I wanted people to focus on. All right, how are you going to just take your hand off the panic button, you know, the 24-7 craziness of life? And um, a good way to do that is by reading a story or cooking a meal. And that's what this book is about. The stories are in there so that you can sit on the loo or, you know, on your way to work or when you've, they're, they're short. And then maybe, you know, you might want to enjoy some of the recipes, which are all simple. And the whole idea is to make it your Christmas, um, not some fake ersatz thing. We've got the ersatz version of follow your star. But what happens when the star leads us to a wormy, dungy stable in a crummy town? and we're wearing our best clothes and expecting applause, and instead we have to kneel down in the straw and give our gifts, which is the best of ourselves, to something that we don't understand. If I'm writing a story, or if I'm doing, if it's a book, um, it's very private. Nobody sees it, I don't talk about it to anybody, I simply don't. Well, in this case, there's an actor reading 11 of the stories. I read one of them um, for personal reasons, as always. But then I read the introduction and the author's note and the recipes because it's me and my voice talking to you. You know, it's great coming into Audible because there's been a lot of thought and sensitivity um, around the whole recording experience. You know, the studios are beautiful. You know, it feels simple, clean, uncluttered. You know, you come in, the whole atmosphere is one which feels productive.